you know before uh, we get started uh, with uh, the introduction to power bi what uh, we will do is we will see how we can install power bi desktop because uh, without installation or without having the tool if i start you know walking through the powerpoint it will not be good right uh, what i will do is i'll just show you how to download this and also i wanted to set the expectations to you all very clearly because in this batch we have a mix of people and few of them are completely new into the software industry and few of them are and you know already they would have explored uh, what is power bi everything and few of them they are already working in power bi they wanted to understand the advanced concepts of the Power BI desktop. Okay, Power BI desktop and Power BI cloud service. Hence, what I will do is in the interest of all, uh, importantly, the freshers. I will consider everyone as a freshers. Uh, you know, you are completely new one to IT. I will start everything from the basic level. Okay, and probably uh, you know after two to three weeks, two weeks down the line, we'll step up and uh, request those do not have IT background to watch my video and start practice it uh, at least on a daily basis one one hour or two to hour you can spend time in, in, in practicing whatever i teach you okay and also uh, i will show you how to go to my website and how you can download the data sets and how you can uh, watch the previous batches uh, live session videos everything i'll show you first and foremost uh, i will show you how to download and install power bi desktop i am sure a few of you have already done that but um, you know, for those of you who are completely new into IT, you know, if you, if you are completely new into Power BI Desktop, I'll just start with the installation. So go to uh, Chrome, uh, whichever um, browser that you are, uh, you know, uh, your favorite browser, you can open it, and from there you will just type. Um, look here, I just go to the Google.com. Type download Power BI Desktop. That's all. So I guess all of you are using uh, Power BI Desktop for, sorry, Windows, right? Windows operating system, not uh, Mac. Okay, if you are using Mac, uh, you know, it will be, it's a little bit different, the installation. Anyhow, I, I, in today's session, I'll show you how to download and install Power BI Desktop um, in Windows system on Windows system. And uh, the next thing is, uh, if you are using Mac, probably we will take it up later. So now what I do is I just go and download Power BI Desktop for Windows. Download Power BI Desktop for Windows. Here, what I do is I just uh, click on the downloads, this link, okay? Click on downloads Microsoft Power BI. When you click on this one, it will take you to this page, Microsoft site. And probably if you can download and install side by side along with me, it will be good. Okay. And also, I request you to join the session, training session from your laptop, the Zoom, right? The Zoom, you can connect it from your laptop so that if I share the link, anything, you can simply uh, hit on that so that it will take you to the website and you can download it directly from your laptop. If you join it from mobile, it is difficult. All right, so now I'm in the Microsoft website. If I scroll down a bit, I can see the Microsoft Power BI Desktop and the advanced download option is also available here. Just give me a second, let me. Here, you can see the advanced download options. You just click on it. I don't need those two things. Let me close one. Yeah, so in, I just show you one more time. So you need to hit this uh, link, advanced download options, okay? Once you hit this link, it will take you to the next page. In this page, if you scroll down here, you'll find the language here, the language selection here. And you don't have to do anything here. If you want to change the language, you just click on the drop-down uh, you know, list here. 
And uh, since we are all familiar with English, we can go ahead with English and uh, the click on download button here. Okay, if you hit the download button here, it will take you somewhere here. And here you can see the two different uh, types of Power BI desktop software. And I would suggest you to um, use this one. So I strongly recommend use 64-bit version of the Power BI desktop um, software. And select this option. If you are using very old operating system or very old uh, desktop, right? In that kind of situation, you can choose this one, okay? But I strongly recommend this one because all of us nowadays, we are using the 64-bit, okay? Fine. The next one is I just hit the next button and it'll, you know, the moment when you hit the next button, you can see that the download gets initiated. The Power BI desktop download gets initiated. You can see it at the left uh, bottom. You can see that I know the software is being downloaded now. Let's wait for a few more minutes. And I would suggest you all to go ahead and uh, download the SQL, Microsoft SQL Server also side by side. And so I just uh, you know, clicked on another tab here. And here I just type download SQL Server for Windows. And the first link you need to click on it. And here, if you watch carefully, In this page, you need to scroll down a bit and you will find the Express software, edition of the software, okay? Express edition of Microsoft SQL Server, you can find it. This is the one is recommended for learning purpose, okay? So the Express and developer versions are completely free version. And this is for, you know, the, the developers. Those of them are completely new one to SQL Server. And if they want to learn the SQL, so learning purpose, you can go for this. Okay, click on download now. And so look here, as soon as I clicked on it, it got downloaded so fast, pretty fast, right? So the next one is, um, I just go back to the previous step. Okay, anyhow, uh, let's keep this as it is. Let's not do anything with the SQL server now. And click on this exe file. I don't know, ideally you can right click on it, show in folder. Look here, Power BI Desktop uh, Setup X64, 16, okay. You just click on it once. It will launch the installation window. Before that, it will uh, ask you for your confirmation whether you want to run this file or not. Yes. The next step is the installation window, right? So here you can see the default language selected as English. Leave it as it is and click on Next. And then you, you know, it will prompt you for this one. You want to make changes to your device. Yes, I won't do that. It'll take some time. So if you have um, 8 GB RAM, it will be slow. Okay, if you have, see, even in my system, I have 16 GB RAM, but uh, it is slow. But in my system, I parallelly use Python and other softwares. But um, 8 GB is okay enough for you, but you need to have patience. Look here, uh, the moment I hit the yes, it is uh, checking the space availability in my laptop. Make sure that in your C drive, you have sufficient amount of space. At least it is always a good practice in your C drive because that is where the Windows is getting booted, right? So make sure that you have at least 100 GB free space available in your C drive. If you don't have it, don't worry. If you just have 50 GB, let it be there. Probably you can do cleanup later sometime. Okay, make sure that you are, uh, you know, uh, keeping all the personal files, everything in your D drive. Okay, don't keep everything in C drive. But installation, you can do it in C drive. Okay, 
any software installation. But uh, check that those softwares you don't use it frequently. You can probably un you know uninstall it. It'll take uh, for a while to compute the space requirements. Once uh, the you know Power BI this software, if it finds sufficient space, the next button will get enabled. Simply hit the next button. It will take you to the next page wherein you will find the installation folder path. Don't make any changes to the default settings. Simply hit the next button. That's it. There. And then uh, the install button will be enabled. When you click on the install button, the installation will get started. You need to wait until you find the installation was successful message in your installation window. I'm talking about this window, OK? So we'll share your uh, login credentials, uh, you know, some this Monday because I'm trying to reach out to our people. They are not available. Okay. In the meanwhile, uh, in the inter what we will do is we will use the time effectively. I'll just go to my website. Our website. We can see our website. So look here, here, um, training. So one is my, uh, the official thing, the deep neuron dot in, because we don't want to combine everything in a single place. Uh, the video in this one, this is our an official website. This is for those people enrolled the training with us. Okay. This is where you will find uh, the actual video study materials, everything. And with your login credentials, whatever we shared, just click on login and then right click on it. For example, I just you know use uh, this student's login credentials. I click on login. Look here. Uh, as soon as you received uh, the login credentials from our side, and if you log in here, and if you you will find your name here, and you need to scroll down here. You scroll down here, you will find the previous batches the recorded videos if if you click on it you will find the previous batch uh, videos whatever i covered right so you can find it here all the videos you will find it here uh, study material including azure data factory and uh, power bi study materials these are the power bi study materials the pdf files and then interview questions and answers and certification dumps and python you'll find all these things here because in the interviews nowadays they expect um python i know the candidates uh, should have some amount of knowledge in python as well i just show you here look here so once, once you log in here, you will find download resources. When you click on this, you will find three buttons here. You just click on the download, okay? When you click on it, all the files related to this training program, including the data file, and then the, um, so the data files like a CSV file, JSON files, and um, Parquet files, and like other files, uh, right, data files, uh, in addition to that, you will find the Power BI reports, which we, uh, you know, share it with you at the time of uh, demonstration, okay? Training program. So you'll find all the videos here and the current batch video. So today's and tomorrow's uh, session video also, you can find it here. We will share that link, don't worry, okay? So sometimes this Monday, but, uh, you know, since we have formed a new batch today, uh, what uh, we will do is we will share all the details on this Monday from next. Once you receive the credentials, it will be pretty, you know, that's all. You will be up and running. Whenever you want, you can access it and you can watch it. Okay. And then the data sets, everything you can download it, including the report file, and you can start practice it. If you want to do fast tracking, yes, this is uh, how you can do the fast tracking. Okay. Watch my previous video, the batches videos. 
All right. For example, in today's session, I'll be covering uh, what are the topics that I cover. Let's you know if I show it in a single, if I call, if I record it in a single video. Now you can go and see uh, what I'm going to discuss about in the next week and followed by the next weekend. You know those kind of things you can find it here in this one. Okay, you can speed up your learning. Okay. And I know a few of you are already working with uh, companies, right? So you are already busy with your work. In that case, what it is simply literally go by the pace, you know, they, they go by the pace of what we you know, follow. Our pace, you can follow it. Got it. So now I just go back to the installation window. Yes, now it has done. Okay, the, the next button got enabled. So when I hit the next button, yeah, you need to click on the I accept the terms in the license agreement and uh, hit next. I'm not going to change this path, hit next. That's it, finally install. When you hit this one, you can see the, you know, the installation uh, progress bar here. And then uh, it'll take probably five to eight minutes or 10 minutes in the worst case. It'll take to install everything. Hope you are clear with this, right? This is pretty simple. I just um, recap. So the first step is it will ask you which language you want to install it. That's it. And then once you click um, the next button, it will prompt you uh, for your concern whether you want to go ahead with installation, installing Power BI desktop in your laptop. Once you say yes, then the next uh, thing is uh, the next button will get enabled. But before that, it will check uh, whether you have sufficient amount of space available in the laptop, especially in C drive with the, right? So if it, uh, it does the, uh, you know, by, by kind of a check, okay? So if it finds uh, enough space uh, that is available for Power BI to go ahead with installing it, the next button will get enabled. And uh, you can click, clicking on the next button, you will find I accept the terms. And the next one is the default uh, installation path. Don't make any changes to this. The next one is install. But in the real terms, you know, in the real world, right? So let's say if you work for a corporate office or any enterprises, they will change this one, okay? Because the C drive, no one prefer keeping the softwares because C drive is meant for Windows operating system, other system related software, okay? This is not the best practice, installing everything in C drive. But anyhow, for learning purpose, let us go ahead with the default settings. Let us not get into the more of admin kind of uh, task, okay? And click hit next, next. So, okay, that's it. So in my case, I've already installed Power BI Desktop. And so I'm going to cancel the installation. Okay, but in your case, you will find the message like uh, Power BI Desktop installed successfully. And then hit the finish button. You are all set to work with Power BI Desktop. Just go to the Start button. Next to the Start button, you just type Power BI Desktop. Power BI, it takes time. Look here, it's already there here. In our case, you just type. I'll just show you one more time. Power BI Desktop and click on this one. It will open the Power BI Desktop. But uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, it's a little bit slow, uh, the Power BI Desktop. Okay, when you click on the Power BI Desktop or, you know, when you press Enter, right, or to launch it, it will take uh, some time to launch the tool. You need to have a lot of patience. Don't think it is not launching, right? Uh, don't click it more than once. It will hang, okay? Don't do that.
So every once in two month or right so or every uh, yeah you know we every uh, almost every once in two month microsoft they introduce new new software in the power bi desktop so what you need to do is you need to keep a close tab uh, you know keep checking uh, any new release of uh, power bi desktop got uh, launched by microsoft so what you do is every once in two months also download the new one and install it okay Look here, now my Power BI desktop got launched successfully. Great. So now what I'm going to do, so this is your welcome screen. I don't need this welcome screen. I just simply go ahead and click on the cross thing here. So now the welcome uh, button got, see welcome screen got closed. Now we can see the Power BI desktop. This is your Power BI desktop software. And apart from this, we have Power BI cloud service which we will discuss it later. We will dedicate a separate session for the architectural part. Okay, because I have a mix of people. If I start talking about the architecture, they will, right, they will feel bored I, because the terms are a little bit, uh, you know, um, it's kind of a fancy term, okay? <laughs> the, the term you should, they, they know everyone should uh, need, uh, everyone uh, should have their own time to understand those terms. That's why I directly started with Power BI Desktop, okay? This is what your Power BI Desktop, what are we, are we will do is now let's explore how we can navigate this Power BI Desktop. What are the components that are available in Power BI Desktop? So we know very well Power BI Desktop is Microsoft product. It is also called as a self-service business intelligence tool. Self-service business intelligence tool. So why it is called as a self-service business intelligence tool? Because even a layman can, or even a person with minimal, a minimal uh, exposure with a working, expo a working experience with uh, Excel can also start uh, creating a simple and basic uh, reports in Power BI Desktop. For that, you know, they don't have to be a tech survey. It is that much simple when it comes to creating the very simple and uh, basic uh, reports. But uh, if you want to uh, create a report uh, wherein you need to join multiple tables and the or especially if you have more number of tables are there. So in that kind of situation, uh, you need to pull the data from different tables. Obviously, you need to have a solid data model design uh, should be there in place. Okay, those kind of things are, you know, uh, require, uh, you know, the learning curve for this is a little bit uh, steep. But um, creating a basic reports that doesn't require too much of technical knowledge. So this is what you are seeing now is the Power BI uh, report canvas. See the, this white colored one, right? This is the one is your display is, is called your report canvas. This is where we create the reports. I just show you here. Look here on the right side. You can see something called visualization pane. Just beneath the pane, you can see the all the types of charts. We call charts as visual in power bi desktop remember that that's it so here what i do is i just click on uh, the chart you can select any chart in this case i just click on the column chart look at the moment when i clicked on this it got tracked into your um, report canvas page here what we do is you know the next step is you can load the data and then probably you can populate this visual with uh, the values okay the from the column values then you can find the you know the chart okay the chart with the, the data when you have it you can see the uh, it will get uh, you know updated with uh, the ch the chart will get updated based on the columns that you dropped in here so this is what your report canvas okay fine and the next one is sorry your model view the first component is report view the second component is the model view so what is model view there is a separate session regarding the model data model okay at this moment i'll just give you an overview of this power pivot it is also called as a power pivot you know pivot uh, most i guess most of you have used pivot in excel right uh, pivot is nothing but converting your columns to rows, rows to columns, right? Unpivot is the opposite, okay? Columns to rows, 
and rows to columns, you know. This is called power pivot. Here, what we do is we are going to create the relationship between the tables. So let's say, you know, this is your, here we have three tables, one, two, three tables, uh, and a relational RDBMS concept. What is the relational RDBMS concept? RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System. Why it is called the relational? Because we don't uh, store all the data in a single table. It's something like in your kitchen. If we keep all the items in a single container, uh, would it be easier for you? It is not, right? It will get messed up. So what you do is you use different containers to store different um, grocery items. Similarly, when it comes to data model, so we keep that data logically you know, in different tables. We create more than one table and then we store uh, the data in an appropriate table. And then what we need to do is, let's say if I want to pull the, um, or I wanted to uh, display in my report, the columns from these three tables. So each columns from these three tables, if I want to display it in my report. Okay, for example, say I'm saying, okay. In that case, you need to create the relationship, the link, the line, what you're saying is called your relationship. You need to create the relationship amongst or between the tables. Only then you can pull the data from all these three tables. Without that also you can pull it, but it will not do the filtering. Okay, so this is where we do the data model design everything. You don't worry about that. The first step is we just, we have to load the data. That's a simple common sense. Let's say your manager is calling you, hey, I need, uh, this report to be created. He gives you an Excel, okay. Or if he tells you, uh, if he shows uh, some, you know, some, if he writes something in the Zoom meeting, right? Uh, like how I use the arrows here. If you write something, you're saying that, hey, this is what the report. Region wise, uh, region wise, quarter wise, uh, sales performance. I want it. What is the prerequisite here? Data. Without data, can you do that? Now you understood his requirement, right? You, you need a report wherein he wants to see the sales by quarter by region. For this, I need to have the data. Without data, how can I create the report, right? So in that case, what you need to do is um, you will have to ask him to give the data. Okay, he has given you the data. You need to load the data, fine. Once you load the data, but the data is not available in a single table, multiple tables it is available. So in that case, you, know, you need to make sure that you are loading all the tables that are required or the files that are required to generate your report. And then you need to create the relationship between those things. Anyhow, we'll take a deep dive about the data model design later point in time. So now you understood the two components. The first one is the report canvas and the second one is the model view. This is called your power pivot. In the case of power pivot, we do the data model design. It, it's simple uh, in our day-to-day uh, -day life, right? So for example, you want to construct a house. Before you construct a house, you need to have a blueprint in place, right? Solid blueprint in place. After you construct a house, especially in the, in the case of apartment, later point in time, if you think uh, you want to make some changes to your model, right? It'll be a problem. It, it, you can do it, but it requires a lot of effort, a lot of time, right? Uh, it causes, sometimes it may cause some kind of um, major issues. Fine. So the first component is the report canvas, second component is power pivot, and third component is power query editor. When you click on the, look here. So in the Power BI desktop, one second. It will open a separate window for the Power Query Editor. I use this analogy for the Power Query, the kitchen. Let's say you go and buy the meat from the uh, market and then what you do? You take it to your kitchen and then you clean it and you chop it and then you remove the unnecessary part of the meat and then what you do is you take all the necessary recipes and then you mix it. And same thing we do it, you know, same analogy, okay, so, you know, we, same thing, you know, somewhat similar to that we are doing it here with data. So we have uh, data available in more than one table. What we need to do is the first test requires that has been met to create a report. Obviously, we need to have the data. Data are available, but 
are those data are usable or uh, are, are those data are available in usable format does it have any issues in it any data related issues any inconsistent data is there in it or any incomplete data is there in it in case of any missing data or duplicate data we need to check it here with the help of power query editor we are trying to address or fix any data related issues and also what we do is we combine more than one data file uh, because in the real time in the real world uh, we need to work with multiple files for example your manager is asking you to generate a monthly sales performance but um, the data uh, uh, you know is not available for the entire 30 months uh, into entire 30 months instead for each day the data they stored in a separate file for example uh, let's say jan month 30 31 days are there you know the e-commerce right they work um, 24 by 7 by 365 so right so 31 days for january you, you know you have the data each day you have a uh, they stored it in a separate file so 31 days file you need to combine it together and then only you can create the monthly report so those kind of merging the data and combining the data joining the data and uh, doing the cleaning everything or pivoting unpivoting any formatting reshaping data reshaping or uh, cleaning uh, everything uh, combining the you know more than one query is everything you do it in the power query data majority of them we do it here including the formatting your data in case power bi desktop wrongly assign the text data type to a date column you need to convert the text uh, so you need to convert the uh, the date uh, column into date column okay transform from your string to data. Anyhow, we'll take a look at this. And in a nutshell, we use three components. One is the Power uh, Power BI report view, and second is the, you know, the Power Pivot, uh, and then the third one is the Power Query Editor. These are the three components you should be aware of. It. But the Power Query Editor, to open that, you need to uh, go to this. You need to be in the Home ribbon, and then click on the Transform Data, you need to click on the transform data it will open a separate window for the power query editor this is where we do all kind of data cleaning everything here don't worry i will show you uh, you know this one little later i just go back to the report canvas supposing you are in uh, the model view you want to switch back to the report canvas view then you need to click on this icon it will you know switch back to this one Okay, now you understood, uh, you have a fair uh, amount of uh, idea about how to navigate, what are the components are there, how to navigate them. So now what I will do is, uh, for demonstration purpose, I am going to load a comma separated value file, CSV file. What is CSV files? CSV file, comma separated, separated values. Okay, for example, you have a file by the name of, let's say your manager gives you a file, sales.csv. Okay, the CSV is the extension of the file. Okay, the sales, this is the file name. The extension of the file is CSV. The CSV stands for comma separated values. When you open this kind of file, right, you will find uh, the every column will be separated by comma. But there are customers where we worked in the past, they have instead of comma, they used a pipe symbol. They use semicolon and all. Okay. But uh, see, a comma separated uh, values files, and these are very popular, and most of the companies still they are using the CSV file. They might be having a full blown data warehouse environment, and you know, maybe that their, their data warehouse they would have built it on top of a cloud, Hadoop cluster, but still. You know the data and all right, the UCC. But in the case of Hadoop system, the you know the, the file you know Hadoop file system they store the files. Okay. Okay. Now we will take a look at how to load the data, the comma separate value file of uh, file. Okay. For this, what you need to do is you need to click on the get data icon here. 
and then you can see a lot of data sources, connectors. If you wanted to load the Excel file into your Power BI desktop, click on the Excel workbook. And if you want to use Power BI data sets, it's a proprietary data set. Okay, a Power BI is a proprietary data set. We want to load that one, you need to click on this one. Then we have something called database, data flows, and SQL Server. Likewise, uh, 100 plus connectors are available in Power BI desktop. That is also one of the striking features of Power BI. You name any source, whether it's um, structured data, quasi structured data, semi uh, structured data, or any unstructured data, you name it anything, right? And, and again, you name any source. For example, you are working in SAP HANA. Yes, even for that, it has a connectivity. Okay, connector is available. JSON file, XML file, a parquet file, and um, no SQL database if you want to connect, right? Everything is available, right? Almost all uh, the type of uh, files you can connect it using Power BI Cloud, okay? Then everything, uh, nowadays, everything is available on cloud. Look here, guys. Um, I just clicked on uh, the get data. Right? It took this much of time to bring up this one, right? Um, okay. So anyhow, I, we don't need that one. Supposing you want to see apart from these connectors, uh, any other connectors that are, you need to click on more. But when you click on more, it will take some time to show other connectors that are available in Power BI Desktop. Okay, now what I do is I click on text to CSV because I'm using a CSV file. Let's start with a simple example and then we will gradually increase the complicated. So in this training program, you'll be learning basic, um, medium and advanced level of concepts. It is always a good idea. Start with simple. It's applicable even our personal life, right? Now the Power BI desktop was trying to establish a connection with my salew04.csv. This is the file that is available in my desktop or the laptop. Okay, in the D drive, I kept this file. Now what happened? Uh, since I, uh, you know, selected the salew04.csv here, right? It is, it opened our data preview window. This is called your data preview window. It will not show the entire data of this file here. Remember this. It will show only part of the or sample data it will show here. I'm not supposed to use sample. Sample is something like a random thing. But here, uh, you know, probably some records it shows, okay? So with that, you can make sure that are you using the right uh, file or not. See, when you work with the companies, right, or the real life scenario, the same, the file name will be same but they would have kept it in different folders. The same file, the, you know, duplicate of this file, they would have kept in different folder, but in some folder, right, they would have duplicated, but in, in that folder, they would have made some changes to this file. They want to use that file. They want to make sure that, are they looking at, are they trying to open the file which they intend to open it? Yes, the data preview window helps you to understand, but it is not loading the entire data. Remember this. Let's say you have, 1 million records are there in this file. And if it displays everything here itself, right, it will take a lot of time. Okay, now um, the data preview window, we are able to understand, okay, fine, everything is cool. And But one problem we can notice in the first record, null is there and blank values are there. There is some data related issues. So probably we can delete this first row. Fine. And then uh, next, if you just eyeball it, sales column, you can see that in the first value of the sales column, you can see the, the numeric value was prefixed with the dollar. There is something wrong here. And also we can see the NE, there are some missing values are there. Power BI desktop, what it does is, in case you don't have any values in your columns, right? It will assign NE. Okay, and also in case of any special character or any text text value uh, is um, you know is available along with your numeric value, it will consider it will assign the entire 
columns, data type as a text data type. This is common in other programming languages also, right? Take Python. If you have only one value, that is a text one, like this. In that case, Python pandas, right? What it, it does is it considers this as a text data type. So now there are two issues. You see, if you have a text uh, data type assigned to the numeric column, like a sales, you cannot perform any arithmetic operation. Supposing your management wants to know the profit, sales minus uh, cost of goods sold, that is the one that gives you the profit, right? And uh, if you want to subtract or if you want to perform any other arithmetic operation on this column, it is not possible because it is a text. Something like Nitesh, Nitesh, Nitesh minus 150. Will it work? It will not work. So you need to address this issue. You need to remove the dollar and then you need to convert this as a decimal data type. Sales is a decimal data type, isn't it? Quantity may be right. It is a integer whole number and uh, the sales and profit and discount. These are all like your decimal data type. But here, unfortunately, this one, since I have the knowledge, right, uh, you know, the I can tell you about the this data as well as the programming background. I can tell you, a friend, this is something wrong. It requires some kind of treatment. Okay, now we have three buttons. At the bottom, we can three button. Load button, transform data, and cancel. If I click on cancel simple, right, simple comments, right, it will not load the data. That's it. I just uh, viewed the data. Okay, I think so I'm using a wrong file. Click on cancel, it will not get loaded. Now, no, no, in my case, everything is fine, except some data related issues. Okay, fine. So I simply go and hit the load button. The other option is transform data. Instead of uh, loading the data, simply open this data in my Power Query Editor. You remember I discussed about Power Query Editor. That is where we do all kind of data cleaning. I related that one with our kitchen, right? So anyhow, I don't want to uh, you know, go to the Power Query Editor upfront. Instead, I just want to click on load. So how do I know? Let's say you, are, you know I open the power query editor. We can see the data here. And the other thing is, let's say you did not open power query editor. So in this case, what happens is, how do you make sure that whether the file got loaded? So you open the preview window, and then you hit the load button. Once that has been loaded, you can see just beneath. This is called your fields pane. Just beneath the fields pane, you can see the file name. This is the one we loaded it, right? And along with the file, you can see the table icon. You might be wondering, I just loaded a comma separated value file, but how come Power BI desktop, uh, you know, assigned is a table type of data, no matter what type of file that you use it, whether it's a comma separate value file, the Excel file or JSON, you name it any type of file. When it comes to Power BI desktop, it considers that as a table. So no, right, the analogy is uh, no matter what community you belong to, end of the day, you're all Indian. The same thing, right? No matter what type of data you loaded, it comes as a table. Okay, now I am satisfied. Good that my data got loaded. No issues, nothing, fine. Now I wanted to see uh, all, you know, the, the, all the data got loaded correctly. Before that, I just want to check all the columns got loaded correctly or not. So in that case, if you want to see the column, just click on this arrow icon here. It will get expanded. Okay, to expand it, you need to click on this. If you want to collapse it, click on this again. So, right, you can see all these columns that are available as for this file, you can see it here. 
Henceforth, we are not going to call it a file, we are going to call it a table. Fine, all these columns are available. The table got loaded. Now I want to see the data. So in that case, we have another icon, data view. We want to see the data. You have to switch to, you have to switch from your report canvas to data view. Click on this. Look here on the right side, you can see 004. It will take some time to load the data. You need to have a lot of patience. When it comes to Power BI desktop, you have to have a lot of patience to load it. Yes, now the data got loaded here. Now I can see not only the table name and column names, but also I can see the data here. It's pretty cool, isn't it? You can see everything here. Fine. The same thing, uh, you can see it in the Power Query. As soon as you load, the data get loaded, you can, if you have already opened the Power, you can see it here. Okay, instead of going to the data view, you can use it here, okay? If you don't think uh, you need a Power Query Editor initially, you don't have to open it, okay? The Power Query Editor is very much helpful. It will give you a quick idea about, uh, you know, your data, okay? It will help you to, or it will facilitate you to understand quickly the characteristics of uh, each columns. Look here, the order ID, along with that, we can see an I, in the, I, the icon like A, B, C. It tells us, this column order D is a text data. So each column, uh, you know, just before that is, you know, each column, you can see the data type here. In this case, all text data type. For a numeric, for example, quantity is a whole number in this case. So one, two, three. If it is a decimal, it's a 1.2, something like that. So with this itself, with this icon, right, instead of saying, Right, you know, the, this one, right? This is where I can, right? 1.2, 1.2. With this itself, we can understand quickly, hey, this is my decimal data type. This is my text data type. This is my... So now, as I said, the sales column got wrongly assigned the text data type. In this case, we are fortunate because we can see uh, the first value itself, right? With this itself, we can make out, hey, this is the one causing uh, the Power BI desktop to assign the text data type to sales instead of the decimal data type. Now, what is the way out for this? We'll discuss this a little later, okay? I'll just go back here, fine. So now we are done with this. And I just go back to the data view here also, okay? So you might be wondering, uh, what is uh, data view and what is Power Query Editor? Here you have a lot of tools are available. Look here, when you click on the transform ribbon, instead of saying menu, we use the term ribbon in Power BI, okay, in Microsoft, right? That's how they use it. The ribbon, I just clicked on the transform ribbon. Here you can see a lot of options to do the data transformation. You want to pivoting, you want to unpivoting, and if you want to replace the values, you want to count the rows, you want to reverse the rows, you can do everything related to data formatting, reshaping, and um, merging, everything you can do it here. Okay. But just to view the data, why you need to open Power Query Data, right? So in that case, you can go to the data view and you can check it. Here also you can uh, drop a column, rename a column. Renaming, you can do it, but the, the issue is here, it is not advisable renaming the column or deleting a column here or any changes if you make it, if you want to do it, it is not advisable. Okay, for example, uh, changes in the data type, right? So here I can go and say date data type, I can assign it. It is not, uh, you know, it is not a best practice uh, changing the data type or deleting the column here. Instead, you can go to the Power Query Editor, you can do whatever you want because the control is that is that they call it a Z in USA, right? Control Z will not work here. If you do anything, for example, in this case, uh, the notepad. So you know what is control Z, right? Uh, what is, if you want to undo some changes, whatever you made it. For example, this is my first session. This is what the original text or sentence, you just made it as uh, first class. Now you realize, no, this is not the correct thing. I want to get back to, I want to undo this new change. So control is that if you press it, it will get you the previous value, right? 
this control is that is not available here the case of data view you delete it anything it will get removed permanently from your model from so look here when i click on the power pivot this whatever this table we have seen it here on the right side right it is appearing like a table here in the data model view we can see that it's kind of a table view anyhow we will discuss this later and i just um, go back here but whatever if you delete a column or if you rename a column everything will get reflected in this model okay it is not advisable there for example i just uh, go here and i don't need this row dot id i am not going to use row dot id in my report my manager you know he doesn't care about this column why do i need this one right click on remove it's pretty simple removing the columns you just point and click this is your original data and what you do right click on it look here this is called your context menu you have a lot of options are available when it comes to data transformation look here remove remove other columns duplicate column all these options are i am going to hit this remove button here so i don't need a row dot id it got removed cool if you think uh, you want the row id to be restored or if you want to undo that change what do you mean by undo the change no no mistakenly i deleted row dot id i want to do control is it but control is that is not available in power query editor also what happens is whatever the steps that you carry out steps in the what are the actions that you carry out here that one will get registered this when is something called applied steps in the power query editor you will find a, on the right side you will find the applied steps um, thing just beneath this you will see all these steps the first two or three steps i know these are the actions i would say raw you know actions carried out by power query you know behind the scene but here this is the one this is the action carried out by us okay so i want to undo the change which means i don't want to delete the row dot id mistakenly i deleted it look here it captured the action which i carried which i carried out just beneath the applied steps it's something like cctv right so which person came first which person came next so in in the proper sequence what are the action that we carry out it will it will record it here all the steps each and every steps so now if you think okay this step is you know mistakenly i removed the or row dot id i wanted to undo this one what you do is just next to the you'll find the cross icon here click on this it's like you were literal control is it look here you got your row dot id column back pretty cool isn't it but the same thing you cannot do it in the data view once you remove it it has gone you cannot do control is it or you cannot click on cross thing like how we did it here right you cannot do it since if you want any data cleaning like anything you can do it or if you think you know you don't have any data related issues Uh, you want to convert the data type for example this is my whole number i want to convert as a decimal in that kind of situation you can go and click on decimal here okay for example if i click on decimal here data type change yes you can change it here there are very simple thing you can do it look here quantity right so it got converted to decimal data type but still uh yeah here it shows the format you need to change the format format also the decimal number and then it will ask you how many digits that you need to how many decimal places that you need to use it so here i just want to use two decimal places we call it here one more time here itself we can go and change it to the whole number that is what the you know default one we have seen it right again you can do you know you can change it here okay so if, for example if i want to convert the whole number but still it shows the decimal value format you need to go and change it here here i just click on the whole number
look here beautiful so these kind of you know changes you can do it here okay um, don't come back and say hey uh, it is possible here also then you said uh, you know if once you make a change here it will not be reverted back there are certain things you can do it but uh, dropping the column and all not possible once you delete a column here you cannot get back here like a row dot id i removed it and when i you know after removing that uh, you know i repented right no no i i want the core row dot id column back into my data set i just did the i know this one right i undone this one by clicking on this one i got it back but those kind of things you can do it there are subtle things you need to be aware of this one okay now we have loaded the sales w04 dot csv file into power bi desktop now the question is is there any way that i can uh, you know give some meaningful name for this column here yeah, table name just double click on it and you can rename the table here so here i just say week 4th uh, uh let's you know uh, november november okay i can say november 2022 or we we do this thing right so 2022 and uh, 11 and uh, today is uh, let's you know 03 or you just think you know not today's date probably 25th november something like that press enter you just want to rename the table it is possible you can rename it this is how you can rename it similarly you can rename the column also So now you understood how to load a CSV file and then how to, uh, you know, um, so how to change the table name and how to do the formatting, right? So data type, all the things. But for example, in the case of uh, sales, here, if you see here, uh, if you click on it here, you can see that it's a text data type. Here also you can see that, the data type for your columns. Okay, but here uh, it's a bit difficult to understand, right? Which one uh, has a dollar in it, something like that. You know, what value causes this column to get kind of 2309? Where it is that? Uh, here I just do one thing, I just, okay, sort descending. But if I do descending, right, uh, it will go by text. Look here, only when you select it here, you can see the 2039, right? clear sort click on clear sort it will not do any sorting okay so here uh, until so only when you select when you click on the drop down here and uh, you can see it here right so you can see the first you have some blank values there and then you have the value which got prefixed with the dollar and comma and all is there because of which but here it is pretty straightforward but the thing is how do i remove the dollar that is a bit challenging here, okay? You cannot remove it. You cannot do uh, the moderate to advanced data transformation reformatting here. So now I just go back to the Power Query Editor. And here what I do is, I just select the column sales, just right click on it. And then what I'm going to do is re click on the replace values. Okay, you need to refresh the because there we made changes, right? And the data view. And so there is no sync here and there. So what I'm going to do is I just click on home and then refresh preview. It takes some time, let's wait for a while.
So here also we can change the file. Okay. Korean, ideally, you come here and change it, or in the report canvas itself, you can change it. And data view also, you can change it. But usually, what we do is in the query window, Power Query Editor, we just change it here. We rename the file here. Column name and uh, table name, if you want to remove it, uh, right? So you can rename it, you can do it here. Look here, automatically it got renamed it in our data model also. But here it takes time to refresh everything because you did some changes in the model itself directly, the data view. So in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is I just close this one. Okay, otherwise it'll keep running. So it is basically refreshing it. What are the changes that I made it in data, right? Because uh, I opened the power creator, uh, you know, as soon as the data get loaded. And then I went to the data view and I made some changes here. This changes whatever I made it in order, you know, these changes to get reflected in my power query data. I need to click on the, I need to refresh the preview. Only then it goes and picks up again. So better, uh, you know, you can do everything there itself because uh, in this case, uh, the though the volume of the data is very less, not very less, less, um, um, it will take time. But in real world scenario, you were working with, even in the case of development environment, uh, working with huge, huge volume of the data. So in that case, right, better you can do all those changes, changes there itself, okay. Any small changes like uh, converting from integer to decimal, decimal to integer, you can do it here. And then you can save it here. Once you save it, look here. So day one, um, give some name, meaningful name for this one and then what you do is you go and proceed with uh, making the transformation there okay now the question is i loaded the csv file into my power bi desktop okay so uh, here i deleted uh, one column one second i just uh, do it uh, for the sake of demonstration Here, I just remove this column. I don't need this column. It go, okay. And I just go to the file menu in the Power Query Editor, close and apply, which means apply all these steps before you close it. And then you close it. So what do you mean by apply these changes? Apply. We already we have applied it, right? We carried out these steps. See, when you get load the data into Power BI Desktop, what happens is, the entire data will get loaded into your memory. Initially, what happens, the data will be in your file. Uh, you know, the Power BI desktop, what it does is it loads the entire data into in memory. Okay. In, in, the, in, the, in the case of uh, Power BI, there is an engine called um, this one. Uh, the There is an engine behind this scene. Okay. That is the one uh, does the uh, load does the uh, this job like loading the data into memory. Vertipack, yes, uh, Nitesh, thanks. Uh, see, suddenly it is not coming up. So Vertipack, okay. So there is an engine called Vertipack. What it does is uh, it loads your entire data into memory, and then it converts your table or data into columnar data. That I will discuss it later. Okay. Now what you need to remember is this data gets loaded in memory. What are the steps that we carried out? Everything is happening in memory. In, war, in order to make these changes permanent in my model, I need to apply this. Either you can select apply or you can click on close and apply. I don't want the power creator any longer because I did all kind of transformation. Close and apply. It got closed. 
Okay, fine. Look here. Can you see row.id? No, right? I removed it in the Power Code Editor. Now it got removed here. Even in the model, you can see that the row.id column got removed. Okay, so when I clicked on close and apply in the Power Code Editor, it applied whatever the changes I made in the memory. Right, it applied it in my permanently applied it in my model. So now the row.id column is not available. Now, an interesting question is now I removed a column from this data set or in the model. How about the column uh, that the, you know that uh, I used it? Or uh, is that column get removed from the OS file also? We'll go and check it here. It will not remove it. Whatever changes you made it to the data, that is local to your Power BI desktop. That is the one you need to remember it. D column, that one. You maximize it and then if you go and see can you see row id yes it is there right it is not making any changes to the underlying file remember this guys this was a very important thing whatever the changes we made it it is all happening only inside the power bay desktop okay now the question is i wanted to have only the changed data i don't want the original data now yes the Power BI desktop stores its changed data, right, into its local thing. The data gets stored in your Power BI desktop report itself. These are the basic things you should be aware. As part of screening, they'll be asking this kind of question. Let's say the interviewer, interviewer set up a, uh, or scheduled an interview with you. To start with, right, to, to break the ice, what they do, they will ask simple question, the basic thing. And with that basic question, also they will understand whether you have really worked in Power BI desktop or not. Okay. So this kind of things, right? So they will ask you. So I removed a column in my Power BI desktop. So the same column will get removed from my underlying operating system file? No. Okay. Where the data get changed? The, the change data, where it will get uh, stored? It will get stored in your Power BI report file itself. What is my report file name? Day one, Pluto, batch one. I just uh, click on file menu, click on save as. I can see that that one folder, this file, I just saved it. What is the extension of this file? They will ask you this one. Can you tell me the extension of your report file? It is .pbax. The extension is .pbax. Don't say .csv. Okay, .csv or data file. This is your report file. Report file extension .pbax. Remember this. Okay, any of, uh, we will try to uh, work with the Power Query Editor extensively. Before that, I will show you how to connect to various um, type of files in Power BI Desktop. So what we will do is a couple of uh, students, they sent a WhatsApp message, you know, they wanted to, uh, you know, close it now. We will continue the uh, rest of the time, uh, you know, um, tomorrow session, okay? So as of now, I'm going to wrap up. Because uh, since today being the first session, they need some time to scale up, okay? Because I have a mix of uh, non et people are there. And what we will do is, um, yeah, so tomorrow we'll continue, okay? Any questions so far? Yeah, those of you, uh, you know, came for a demo, right? Um, I will discuss uh, the rest of the regarding job opportunities and, uh, you know, what um, process that we follow, what is our workflow when it comes to positioning you, that I'll explain it to you offline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the session now, if you don't have any questions. I'll give you some time. And again, the data file limitations, uh, you know, how many number of columns can I use it to, uh, know what is the uh, limitations uh, of uh, the file. In the case of this is a free license. Power BI Desktop is a free 
it's kind of open source you can go and download it from the internet you can use this tool as long as you want it unlike a tableau power bi desktop doesn't have any trial version okay it is not uh, you know given only for this you know try it doesn't have any trial period like um, tableau tableau you can use it only for 15 days beyond that you cannot use it and also a lot of limitation the trial version you cannot load more than 10000 records and here it is not like that but however there are some limitations but not much okay you can use any type of source system you can connect to any type but even tableau i think uh, you can use only some specific type of files and like a csv files excel files not all type of files but microsoft power bi supports all kind of files with the you know free version but one limitation one drawback is you cannot share the report to your customers okay your internal stakeholders you cannot share this report uh you let's say your uh, stakeholders are located in us office let's say you work for walmart or target or amazon right they have their global presence across the globe they have offices supposing if your ceo wants to see what is the sales in india right so in that case the data is available only in your local system what what is used so what we do is we'll publish it on cloud that is when it requires a license but otherwise creating the data model creating the report report design everything you can do it in the the free version of power bi desktop and you can connect to any source system the limitations with respect to data everything we'll discuss it in the next session fine uh, since uh, you guys don't have any questions so far i'm going to wrap up the session and also i request you guys right um, please uh, watch my videos and then start practice it then and there don't postpone it if you accumulate it a later point in time it is very difficult okay it will take longer time for you to review i think certain things you might forget it and you will not have time to you know watch each and every video another thing is in case of any uh, feedback or suggestions you can whatsapp it to me and when it comes to job and everything we'll discuss it later don't worry okay okay guys thanks for all your patience and understanding i'm going to wrap up the session now we will continue tomorrow night okay yeah some question came up aditya uh, do you have this sales or csv yes yes everything is available aditya all the files are available okay everything is available any of uh, tomorrow what we are going to do is um, even for the the recent batch we have used different report files the advanced uh, scenarios real time scenarios related report files and uh, data files also will be uh, you know uh, publishing it okay Thanks Karthik thanks for your time okay i'm going to wrap up the session